record the electronics bottles, humidity temperatures. And that gives us a uh, baseline. It's going to go black one more time. 24 hour dive, we refer to that, record those numbers every hour. Hopefully nothing changes radically. After that, then we can just hit the gauges and then I'll be good. Right. Okay, we should be good on white balance. White balance complete? Yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You want craft back? You want uh, it back? You, you can, it's uh, yeah, you can. Put, let me slide the camera back out of the way here. You can park it. Roger. Whenever you're ready. I'd say that red looks red, that green looks green, and that blue looks blue. Nice job. Jim. Yeah. The craft predator with the high-tech electrical tape on there. <laughs> it is amazing at this depth that we get those colors. It's an illusion. You want to uh, park the arm for yeah. me? Are you good with your uh, sound speed? Nope, I have to wait till we're on bottom for 15 minutes because it's logging. Um, and I, yeah, I know you're still stretching out here and I was going to wait till you're off auto XY to do the dead reckoning. Just uh, bring your shoulder down a bit there for me. I mean the elbow, elbow, elbow. Elbow down. You're going the other way, mate. You're gonna yeah. be in the bumper bar there. There you go. Elbow down, pitch out. Yeah, there you go. And good for blue button? Right uh, there? Sure, or you want yeah, it more? Sure, that's good. Thank you. So, gauges are good? You got those uh, numbers, do you? Yep, yeah, I got the gauges one. Good. Crab comp is not exploded yet. That's always good. Okay, back row, in theory, we're all yours, but there's a caveat. We have uh, some wicked current. Yep. So I'm going to play around with it here for a bit. And I still have a couple things to do, but they're very small. All right. And actually, we had some more map questions from earlier, so if we can, um, people really like seeing the map, so if we can uh, talk about that more too, that would be yeah, awesome exactly. too. Um, if but not right now. Yeah. I mean, at some point, future point. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever after, you're free. After we're done here, then I'll have time. Yeah. And again, to our viewers, thank you for tuning in, and we appreciate your okay. curiosity in exploring with us. We'll you're return to Auto XY. Roger. Uh, we'll return to questions shortly after um, we're in a better position to do so. Uh, Mia is now changing our navigation over it. So we've been on dead reckoning on the way down, uh, which re relies on our acoustic USB ultra short baseline system. Uh, 
basically like a whale or a dolphin. And now she's changing over to our Doppler velocity log, which is uh, an instrument that pings the seabed with four beams and uh, is much more accurate for tracking the ROV. Roger. Dive log. Good. I'm going to get broadside to it here and see if I can make any progress on it. I believe we're looking for a rock for Val at the start of the dive. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more inclined to take a rock from a group of rocks that look like it, it's originated there rather than something that might have fallen in or sunk if it's pumice, but... It looks like we've got some groupings of rocks here. Could be groupings of rocks. Could be biology too. All right, I'm gonna switch to sonar dyne over here. I'm gonna see if our s sound speed is ready. And I think I've buzzed. Biotech observation would be a small sponge, a stock sponge. Do we like a any of those rocks? The one right in the front looks good. Oh, we have one mine. What do you think of that one, Taylor Ann? The one in front. Looks pretty angular and grapefruit Ooh. sized to Wedge shaped? Me. Yeah. From a start of dive? That could be the right size, possibly. Tell your bits, maybe. Yeah, it hasn't logged yet, so we'll wait a few more minutes. We'll be here. And probably that's a small Galapagos sponge, because it looked rosy. Uh, another light. Oh, no, no, that's oh. not what I wanted. Ah, uh, I have to turn it. Oh, no, it is on. Yep, it's on. Really? Ready when you are. I'm ready. I'll put it two cameras for you. Um, so swing to the right a little bit. Uh, basically, sorry, try not to block what the you're going to grab with the manipulator. Yeah, don't get the manipulator between the camera and what you're going for. So come in from Roger. the side or from the back. Or and again, I usually poke it jaw closed. Yeah. yeah. Now you know where the tip of the manipulator is. Nice and slow. that we'll get uh, Jana to zoom in a bit and you can do a victory roll. Does that look angular? It does look angular and wedge shaped. Yeah, it does. And yeah. dark, it's a little smallish, but it could be a small cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. I like it. You like it? Yeah, I think that looks good. Let's do it some sharp edges. Yeah, this is important for geology. So we'll stand by until it's in the box. Okay, I'm gonna hit the sample salvo so the world can see you try and put this rock in the box. Let's do it. No pressure. No, wrong button. What box are we going, Taylor Ann? Good to uh, go wide. Any, any starboard box yes, good to go is wide. fine, or? Going wide. Uh, I think that uh, might be easier to hit, reach around. Uh, craft on the bubble so you can see your azimuth as you come around Thank there. You. we think it'll fit in one of the small boxes? Yeah, it looks like it'll fit in one of the small boxes. Just let me know which letter you're going for. So many choices. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Where's the other camera? Uh, 
Uh, where's the other camera? I think it's right, right here. Thank you. Bang. All right. I had the wrong folder put up, but everything is ready for the sound speed. All right. Up. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. So I believe that's uh, everything on my list. Way, maybe. Elbow, or shoulder up, elbow down. Shoulder Just up, one. elbow down. Or if you're like me, just move the jaw which way you want it to go. It's kind of challenging part is your cameras are backwards. So you can see right now the shoulders all the way up. Yeah. The upper arm is uh, vertical. When it first comes down off of that, the kinematics are such it'll kind of make kind of a rapid movement. Okay. So I try and come down just a little bit on that. Gotcha. Bring the shoulder down just a little. So if you're close to the box and you do that, it'll slam it into the box. Like that. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's the hot ticket. I think I would go for one of the big boxes there. I don't, I don't know about the little box. Yeah, that's fine. You guys are taking a sample, right? Yes. Yep. Because I have to log that too. <laughs> um, that one. Yeah. Bombs away. Awesome. Jake, was that Bangle, you? Bangle, handle that. That was Jake. Awesome, Jake. Great job. That was sample 090. Thank you. Zero Ooh, nine Jake. Zero. Jake's rock. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we just want to um, remind our viewers that this sample is a very sacred sample, um, that these rocks, although they don't appear to be alive, do um, contain ancestral roots of the native Hawaiian um, peoples and this is a very very special sample that we are taking um, and we want to make sure we are very conservative with what we sample so that's why we paused and made sure it was an angular rock um, like our geologist was interested in um, so if anybody wants to speak a little bit more on that um, Jaina or um, Elsa or our science communication fellow over there <laughs> okay, let's, let's wait till we're clear of the bottom here and okay yeah uh, to uh, free and mobile again. I'll try and show you what's going on here. Yeah, so right now you have the elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Keep coming down on the elbow a bit more. This one here. Yeah. When you bring the elbow down, you want to bring the pitch up. Yeah, I hold. I hold my finger under there because this thing is heavy and yeah. that's what's happening to you there. That's why the... So, halt the arm now. That's it, halt. Yeah. Uh, keep this one all the way up mm -hmm. and bring this oh, up a bit. So I put my finger under it like that Okay. because it's heavy, this is a bilateral master. And bring that way up. And now then when you freeze, you'll come down on this joint and that'll bring that elbow Roger. It's horizontal right now. That'll bring that. Roger. Hold on. Are you live? Yeah, uh, I'm Read live it. now. Halt it. Yeah. Come up like that. Now, I'll come down with this one. Uh -huh. and this one wants to come up so you don't stab yourself. So that motion like that. Uh, Roger. Uh, uh, yeah. That's good there. You can blue button. So you're, you were pretty close on your elbow, but your pitch was up as opposed to pointing back towards the... Yeah, okay. Now that, that helps a lot with that method. That you just yeah, Thank you. That, that master arm is a, what you call a bilateral master arm, so it has motors in it and mm -hmm. strain gauges, so it's kind of heavy. It's meant to uh, have um, 
what Take we call it. bilateral control, so force feedback. Awesome. Mahalo kanaloa. All right. Yeah, thank you. For well that. done. So we've got a bearing to waypoint two. South. South. A lot of these rocks are, well, you know, I gotta do the presumed to be a kupuna or uh, ancestors, I'm in a so very thankful for everything that we, we get to move. take. Sorry, what was that, Jake? Oh, no, I was just saying is, you know, it's perceived that all these rocks are considered our kupuna or our ancestors. And, you know, this is, you know, just very blessed to be able to, you know, take one of our ancestors and, you know, be able to study them and, you know, see kind of what their life was, how they ended up in this spot, took them away from their homes, but, you know, we're thankful for that. Yeah, well, we can refer to the special nature of this place, but Jaina, you and, and Jake, have much more direct relationship to it, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you as always for sharing. The current's kind of on our tether side, but I don't know how it is driving uh, with the Herc, so it's up to Dan. Yeah, thanks for sharing that too, Jake. You have a lot of shout outs in the chat. Um, great job, Jake. Yay, Jake, well done. So um, everyone's really excited to be kind of driving and learning about the ROV driving process together. Thanks for coming along on the journey with me. <laughs> I've been an awesome free teacher. To offer your Jake commentary as <laughs> as you learn. Right. <laughs> um, Look, um, whatever man said, one six something. One six zero. Yeah. Uh, stand by. Other way. Other way, other way, other one. Too. Left turn. Yep. We're just working on a bearing to get us to where we go, but also move well through the currents and through the terrain. I'm just going right. to um, We're standing by. set it down here for a minute and, or get close and uh, I need to play with this sonar here. Stay hurt. <laughs> really? Oh, good. Roger. Can you come down uh, five meters for me? Down five. Coming down five. Down five.
Yeah, it's just still not picking up anything. Mm. Yeah, all my settings are uh, wonky here. Reset. Yeah, they reset everything. Kind of where they were. All right. I have a picture. Oh, just can't find it. Play with the settings all the time, depending on. Uh, yeah. Okay, man. Get us out of the saddle, please. Do you want to do a small move, like two zero? Yes, please. At 160? Sure. Bridge now. Can we please step two zero at 160? Thank you. All right, we're in good shape. Yeah, we're cooking with gas now. Nice. I, I don't think it's you're supposed to cook with gas anymore, actually. Wasn't that the, what? the last thing we heard? Gas stoves are the best. Uh, I mean, I would any day prefer cooking huh? on a gas stove. Something about the fumes. Yeah, oh. probably. Oops. Anyway, Taylor Ann, I appreciate you bringing that up. And Jake, thanks for helping us all understand the, the special nature of this place. Uh, are we in a position to zoom on things? We have that mic close to your... Oh, sorry. No, I was just asking if we are in a position to zoom on organisms. Of course we are. Right here? Yeah, I think we are looking at a Chrysogorgia and a Juvenile Metallogorgia to the right, which has probably a shrimp associated with it, but the colony on the right definitely looks like a Juvenile Metallogorgia. The other is a Chrysogorgia. Uh, and I you want both there or left or right? Uh, the juvenile metallogorgia, this one would be better. Right. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Jay. Juvenile just because it's smaller and less dense? And yeah, so, or it can be a kind of chrysogorgia as well. They can be very, they can be quite uh, difficult to differentiate because metallogorgias are... Uh, the chrysogorgids which have a long stalk and then all the branches and the polyps on the top like a mm -hmm. umbrella but uh, the juvenile ones have the branches coming out along the entire length of the colony but they gradually start losing them as they grow older so given the density of the branches and the pattern to me it looks like a juvenile metallogorgia but it can be a kind of a chrysogorgia as well and it has a nice squat lobster I was associated say with it. Your yeah. second favorite thing, <laughs> squat lobster. Yep. Welcoming us towards Sea Mound as we start our journey. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Is, uh, did you move your head in around, or is it? No, it's just. It's always you might nice struggle to a little yeah. start the dive with the squat lobster. It's kind of <laughs> just ripping me. Yeah. 
Um, but it shouldn't be ripping that way. We'll wait. Uh, well, we're going to wait here till Atlanta gets a little closer to the. Roger. Uh, can you go Tom away just you. a bit for me? And this looks like a dead we'll stalk of something with we'll hydroids growing, and there was oh, a small yeah. anemone on the rock as well. And a little while ago, uh, I, I think we passed right? over a small oh, colony of rock pen, uh, which all is the a kind of a sea pen. I'm talking to Jane, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Video going. Okay, zoom in on the other. Uh, let me see what you got going on there. Gets a little closer here. Is that another squat lobster? Yes, that's another squat lobster. Probably looks like it's hanging upside down in the Chrysogodia, though. That's a be uh, beautiful close up on the Chrysogorgias, and we can see that. So the Chrysogorgias uh, are commonly called the gold corals because of the golden tinge to their skeleton and mm. we can have a good idea about why they get the name from this particular uh, close-up because you can see that the branches are really thin and uh, they have a nice shiny golden color to them. Mm -hmm. Wow, thanks for sharing that. What a perfect moment to yeah. <laughs> see that example. Thank you. It's kind of like very fine polyps. Yeah. I think if I keep a shorter delta, I'll be in that current. Is the Aridogorgia also a gold coral? Uh, yeah, yes. So I think the name gold coral is more commonly associated with this particular genus, Chrysogorgia. Right, okay. But I think it can be applicable to the whole family. Okay. So it may be, it's probably applicable to the whole family, but I've seen people refer the term gold coral more frequently with just the Chrysogorgias. Same but then there are, I've heard other people use it for the whole family. That's okay. And can you also share a little bit about what our little squat lobster friend is doing here? He's coming out at us. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the genus. Give me a second. I have it written down. 20 meters, 160. Uh, the Eurotychus spe species. Mm -hmm. The Ooh, genus Eurotychus. Like, do we know anything about, like, what it's doing in the coral or, you know, why are its arms so long? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how squat lobsters are and they perch themselves up on the corals to get an advantage over the sea floor and so that it's easier for them to catch organisms that's coming in the water column. I love the answer. That's how squat lobsters are. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, they have the, uh, very long appendages, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very long yeah, appendages. Yeah. And this one is just, I don't know, hanging upside down, plopping itself over the right. chrysogorgia. It's just tired and taking a nap. It reminds me of, if you've ever seen True Animal Facts <laughs> on YouTube, and <laughs> they say, like, that's how the octopus do. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just how it is. Um, of course, there's adaptations as well. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely check that out if you're not familiar with um, True Animal Facts on YouTube, they are a really great source of um, information and uh, can help share some really cool scientific studies in a, in a fun way. So check that out. For some reason, I don't know if the PC's got rebooted or something, sometimes the heading speed gets clicked down yeah. here. And it, uh, same with the joy gain in it. Oh yeah. So it seems to be... Uh, off. Yeah, seems to be behaving now, but it's definitely struggling there. But I think we're a bit stretched out. Atlanta hasn't really started to move yet. Yeah. It's just now maybe moved five meters. Um, we've moved the ship 20 meters. Correction. Ship has now moved 30 meters. Atlanta has moved 
five, five. meters. <laughs> Why does it have little hairs on its claws? Are those like sensory, uh -huh. like cat whiskers? Sorry, I didn't catch that. I'm talking to the back row. The uh, squatty has little uh, cat whiskers on its claws, or those light cat whiskers. I'm, a, I'm a dog owner. A lot of dog whiskers. <laughs> yeah, they have those. <laughs> I like. I, could, I I'm. I like how we can see its eyes. I know. The stalked eyes. Oh. Oh, Oops. here it comes. It's, it's coming, coming at us. It's, yeah. Did you say you're a dog person, Hans? I dog am a dog one. person. I know. I, I have to wait till the shift's over, but I just got a notification from my pet sitters. They usually send pictures. Oh, cute. You'll have to show us after. Yeah. yeah. After, like, we should have, like, a Good party for to share stories about that. Two zero at one six zero. Roger. I only moved, like, 10 meters. Yeah, this the squat lobster just reminds me of some of those cheesy monsters in B science fiction movies, mm. which are excellent. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I was just playing a horror video game this year, and one of the um, monsters has really long arms that it grabs you with. So, um, kind of mm. reminds me of squat lobster, but. The squall lobster is really cute, so <laughs> also a little different. We're waiting on a ship move, right? No, we're waiting on an Atalanta move. Atalanta though. move, Atalanta move, yeah. I think in the Atalanta camera looking down. Maybe those striations in the sediment are indication of current, you think? Could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is definitely a possibility. Or I don't know how mobile the smaller pieces of rocks are, how easily they can be moved by the current. Okay, go in, please. And uh, come up a couple meters there for me. Yep. I'm gonna come up to like 17 maybe. Yeah, right. Just gonna, when you go a little bit higher, and it's like I think the current ready. You hold that uh, heading there too. Uh, I had it dialed in to 160, which is gonna be our bearing. Roger. Which happens to be uphill ish. So I'll try and get out. Deeper here, so Are we in a position where we can um, address a question? Uh, if it's for me, I think I think so. Yeah. Oh, great! Um, thank you so much. So, uh, it was so cool to see the map earlier, and then you were kind of talking about like the points weren't matching up or something, and I believe you were talking about how like the former map by the RV Falcor. Um, might not quite line up with the map that we made, right? Could you explain how that process works? Like why, um, due to technology reasons or other reasons, why would the maps be slightly different? 
So I can only speculate. <laughs> I don't know why they were different, but so, yeah, there sure are different not. variables yeah. that can, you know, when we talk about things like sound speed profiles and um, there's a lot of instrumentation and if you're using older instrumentation, maybe it's not as accurate or maybe it's not calibrated or, you know, there's a number of different things uh, that can make things, you know, not line up. And then, um, sorry, just moving the nav screen here. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know for sure, but we wanted to do that pass over last night before we started diving today, just so we could see if if we did line up with that data because it was older. Do you know what years it was created? Do you remember? 2014. Yeah. 2014, yeah. So I think we've come quite a long way with multi-beam since then. Um, so I would guess, my guess, as is not a fact, <laughs> it would be that uh, probably it's a bit different because we have different technology and more precise instrumentation. Cool, thanks for that. Yeah, that time component also just like the software and the equipment is constantly getting upgraded, right? So that makes sense. Um, and then another question, again, only if you're free. Um, how does this seamount compare to the seamounts that we've already visited um, during this expedition? Is the terrain very different or similar or um, anything striking about this seamount? So, I think it's hard to say because we just got to the bottom when we, um, in a way, they, we've had a similar path where we're kind of going on a ridge that was in the dive plan. But as we've gotten to the bottom of these different seamounts, you know, or for our shift in terms of diving uh, or working with the RVs, um, we've seen different things, right? So some of it has been very rocky. Some of it, we think it might be like this, where there there aren't a lot of like large boulders in the way, but we had that one dive where it was just all those big pinnacles, right? So um, I think they've all been different but we've been oh, oh, try right, okay. trying to, the expedition leaders are working to try and set the dive plan so that we can, uh, you know, work on getting those samples that are useful for the geology teams, the biology teams. Um, so I think in, in a way it's a bit consistent in trying oh, to go maybe along a ridge line, but besides that, I, uh, they've all been different from what I, I've seen. Cool, thanks for that. All right. And if we're still okay to answer some more questions. Um, I want to keep that 160 heading for a while, Jacob. Roger. So I get a lay of the land here while we're going. Yep. Once we get started out. Care if you were talking to me, I, I turned you off for a second oh, no to talk to the bridge. Yeah, no, and feel free to um, stay on SBL when you talk to the bridge if you if you would like, and that way I know when to pause, and um, I'll totally uh, pause talking whenever you're trying to communicate with the bridge. It's fine. I don't mind turning it off. Um, just didn't want to. If you were talking to me, I wanted to let you know. Yeah, thanks. Um, it was actually, if we're still okay for questions, question for Pashana about um, when will you um, be thinking of completing your PhD and will your research be available online for us to look at? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, the bulk of my research is done. Most of what is left is the writing part and there's one uh, aspect, one aspect of analysis that I still want to do so given that uh, and yes we're looking at a wonderful sea star currently on this screen sea star yeah probably the family saw last day I think we have seen this thinner white one oh uh, yes yeah, so coming back to a question so if everything goes according to plan I am trying to finish within the next year 
and uh, as a part of that and even after finishing i will be uh, working on publishing the manuscripts for each of the chapters and for all the work that i have done in the last five six years so once that as they get published they will definitely be available uh, for everybody to read, for everybody to, uh, and all the data will also be available for anybody who wants to go back and continue working on those. And the dissertation itself should be available online as well as awesome. per the regulation. So definitely. And anybody who's interested in octocoral phylogeny or evolution or CPEX in general can feel free to reach out to me. Uh, with questions uh, or for discussions or project ideas or just having or getting to know more about this field. Uh, my email address is on our bio page uh, and also I think I have, I'll be, I'm available on Instagram. That's I think the only, Instagram and Twitter is the only things that I use. Uh, so anybody can feel free to definitely reach out and I'll be happy to discuss anything related to the deep sea octocorals and science and biology and conservation in general. Wow, awesome. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I feel like if there's any questions for CPENS, you're the, the go-to <laughs> person, right? <laughs> no, I th so. there are a couple of people. I know Raisa works on uh, CPENS. Then there's Dr. Gary Williams. Obviously, there are other people throughout the world as well. Wow. Everybody has yeah. been really... Um, and it is a it is a very nice and supportive field to be in, in general, the deep sea biology and Dr. Corals. Uh, so that's great. Thank you. And now I'll try to ID the C star. Did you get an ID? Yeah, I've been waiting. It's yeah. been excitement. Yeah. I mean, we can continue moving. Uh, they're um, they're working on something down oh, here. Great. So then we can. Roger. Thanks. Continue watching this beautiful yes. C star. I think that is happening because we have the back Keep moving on. The ship if we want, please. on. And just jumping in to answer another quick question from our audience, um, asking about uh, Little Hercules so, um, and why it's been on the deck. Uh, this expedition, so we were planning on using Little Hercules for our deep archaeological archaeological dives um, to uh, oh, she, she's doing something in Kaga the Akagi and the USS Yorktown. Um, we ended up using Atalanta, but um, if you would like to check out those videos, we did recently re release them um, for each of those uh, aircraft carriers as well as kind of a general recap and. There's lots more commentary from um, historians that have been on board, um, as well as a team of uh, um, archaeologists and historians on shore. So definitely check that out. Yeah, it was unfortunate. There was an issue with Little Hercules that couldn't be repaired on board the ship. But we had an option with Atalanta to complete the mission. So that was very fortunate. Yeah, and really like ocean exploration, a lot of times it's all about adaptation and figuring, how, figuring out how to make things work. So glad that was able to be an option. Well, I feel like we just arrived and we have 30 minutes left in our watch. Yeah, I know, all that <laughs> blue water time. Um, and uh, thank you all for your questions. I'm sorry if we couldn't get to as many of them because we are doing some training. And um, thank you for all the shout outs for Jacob, our ROV intern. I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> we also have a question about um, was this area teeming with life 50 to 100 years ago? So it's maybe more of a paleobiology question. Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Was this area teeming with life 50 to 100 years ago? So I think this question is based on like how we find fossils yeah. of corals yeah. in like in places we wouldn't expect in like the U.S. Right in like yeah. deserty areas. Um, I'm uh, not sure how much we can say about it, but do you want to share something? Yeah, absolutely. I would say no. 
they weren't. Because the deep in the deep sea or each of these coral colonies that we see, for example, we guys looking at two beautiful chrysogorgias here, uh, they are very slow growing and most of the colonies or the bigger fans that we see, they are several hundreds of years old. So uh, if fif 50 to 100 is a very small time scale when it comes to the deep sea. So if they were, for example, 100 years ago, say this place had a lot of diversity, a lot of abundance of corals and suddenly something drastic happened and all, all the fans ended up dying, something major happened, then we would have definitely seen lots of dead corals all around. We don't see that because the any process in the deep sea is very slow. So those fans, their skeletons would have remained here on the sea floor and the deep sea is such that conditions don't change that easily or that fast. Again, slow, fast are relative terms and a 100 to 50 year scale is a very small time window when it comes to a environment such as the deep sea. So uh, I would say the, I mean, yes, maybe millions of years ago, probably, yes, but could be, but well, not so much. Not like a hundred, yeah. 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 What about right. Thanks for that thoughtful answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, yeah. What if you add uh, a million onto that 50 to 100 million? Yes, years? exactly. If you add 50, a million to that, then yes. But just in itself, no, I wouldn't say so. I think those are indications of current yes. striations yes. in the sediment. For Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Are they symmetrical or asymmetrical? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, asymmetrical or current. Ah. Symmetrical or wave action. Back and forth, back and forth. Like on the beach. I'm going to go with asymmetrical. That looks more like a crinoid to me from a distance. Well, one of the profs at Hawaii has been studying sand waves around well, these seamounts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. um, like during the winter time at Waimea, Waimea Bay, uh, if you go after like a solid swell, eight foot swell and everything, then on a flat day you go, you just see just ridges, ridges and ridges all over. Just mix of wave action, currents and everything and there's a lot of known for its rip currents too. Um, very fun place, but very dangerous. But it's so cool to see the little mounds underwater. Wow. Yes, absolutely. It's just amazing to think that, you know, uh, such great mountains are there under the water. The view from Atlanta is mesmerizing. It gives an idea of where we are. And I think, uh, as Elsie pointed out, which I missed, we uh, passed over a small sea urchin, uh, and we are again uh, seeing four chrysogorgias in front of us, but uh, on that rock, on that boulder, I should be calling it a rock. A big rock. Yeah. And you know, I've spoken to many people who are not deep sea biologists or, art or geologists and doesn't think about the deep sea so much, and they've always been amazed and surprised by, oh, what, there are mountains under the sea? Uh, we would have never thought about that. Um, because I think we always think that the sea floor is just a, a flat uh, base that's there under me kilometers of under 20, yeah. water. There's something on the rock here. Can we have a quick zoom if possible? Is there? Is this the oh. shadow? Oh, it's just probably the shadow. I'm sorry. How dare you, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to compensate. <laughs> Not having a cookie what? tomorrow. What <laughs> I missed something. So I thought there was something on the rock which looked like a sea cucumber. You just have to be there. But <laughs> it was just the shadow of the rock. Again, three very beautiful chrysogorgias.
Do you think that skinny one is a black coral? Uh, we can have a look, if possible. Or uh, I didn't mean to slow us down. I was just no, no, no. wondering in passing. It can be a black coral, you're right, or it can be a stalk which is overgrown by hydroids as well. Yeah, that looks like a stalk uh, overgrown by a hydroid, which was probably a metallogorgia uh, stalk, because we can see the little spirals on it. Little curvatures, they're not fully spirals as in iridogorgia. Okay, go ahead. So that would be a young metallogorgia by its side. Yeah. Whoa. What is it? A dead sponge with a munidopsis and a bunch of hydroids overgrowing it. Yeah. But there's parts of the sponge tissue that does look alive still, more towards the top, but it's majorly a dead sponge with lots of hydroids and a beautiful white munidopsis, uh, Scott lobster perched on it. How long do you think these sponges can sta stay standing like this after they are in this condition? Ah, that's a difficult question. I think it also depends on the current that's mm -hmm. present. Right, yeah. But I would say that they can uh, stay like this for a while because... The siliceous spicules. Mm, yeah, yeah, they provide like strong structure to the sponges. I think as it gradually degrades, I think it becomes weaker and mm -hmm. dissolves. It, so I, it dissolves in the seawater because it's the siliceous spicules. I don't think I want to go. Oh, that's a black coral at the what back. I would say, and there's a small chrysogorgid at the base of this dead sponge. Sponge stalk. I think we are coming up on a black coral, or again, a stalk overgrown with hydroids. Where do you see a black coral? Uh, it, we did see it like a stick-like thing extending when the ROV was at a different angle. There's a s right. something white over there right. as well. Right. Can you circle? Uh, right, right, the lasers. The the lasers. The, yeah, that's the white thing, but yeah. that's not the black coral. Push in there real quick. That Good. looks like a small primnoid, right? Yeah, I would say that looks like a small primnoid colony. Thank you. Okay, go in. I so we can expect more such here. larger fans probably as we go uphill. Uh, the black coral. Yeah, we can continue moving. I'm sure we'll come up on more. Right. That's a metallogorgia. There's something like a stick that's sticking out from the... Yeah, yeah. I think I know what it is, but I'm going to be quite surprised if I'm right. I'm so curious now. <laughs> what is it? I will tell you even if I'm wrong <laughs> and why I would be Push surprised. Can I get it now? Do you see there at least? Okay, great. Yes. I am wrong, and there's reason. So this is a bamboo coral web that we are seeing. Uh, we have been seeing lots of these in our pr on the previous seamount as well. And uh, f 
from a distance, my C pen, C pen brain had started tingling, and I thought for a second <laughs> that it is a Baltasenia, but this is not an environment where you would generally oh. find a Baltasenia. It's too rocky, but there are little bits of sediment, so I was like, oh, maybe this is going to be a, a novel uh, observation of a Baltasenia, mm, but a, it's yeah. not. It's beautiful a picture. Yeah. Yes, Hans, that's okay. a very beautiful oh, picture and a great angle for the bamboo core. Thank you. Is it hard to get enough samples for your research, like sea pens? Because we haven't seen that many sea pens on our dives. Yeah, the, it is difficult. It is difficult to get uh, sea pens. And it's, we don't, they're not generally found on the sea mount, so this Come is up, not like please. the ideal habitat for them. Oh, okay. Because they are generally found more on the softer sediments, but gotcha. they, are, they, they can be less abundant than some of the other kinds of octocorals. That's why it gets very difficult to get right. good samples. Like we have a lot in the museums, but a lot of them are very old and not, and preserved mm. in different ways than what is ideal and okay. optimal for genetic and genomic work. Uh, right. Like formalin or something versus ethanol. Yeah, or and also yeah. different grades of ethanol and how quickly mm. they were put in ethanol. Oh, that's, oh, can we have a quick zoom? Yeah, that is an, Umbelula, right. pseudo umbelula. Let's count the polyps because <laughs> that is important for <laughs> IDing the genus. And if it is pseudo umbelula, it would be like a good uh, collection. And like we wanted to on a previous dive and we couldn't because of okay. conditions. If it's ideal, then wait, is this a sea pen? It is. We were just talking about sea yeah. pens and then a sea pen appeared. It just sounded like something from Sesame <laughs> Street. Like, there okay. it is. One. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Is see that how up many. A three times really fast. <laughs> okay, let's see if it's less than 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Is it? Somebody help me count. I can't. <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like nine to ten for me. Uh, C pen, aka. I'd say number. 12, 13. Tough. I guess. Oh. Just stay still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. I'm trying to count the round I think parts. 11. One, I also two, counted three. 10. What do we do now? Average? One, <laughs> two, I don't know. Three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, and nine, two, ten, eleven. It's less than 15. If the consensus is... Do you oh, I see 11 less now. Than 15. I think, yeah. I think okay. a less than a 15. Okay, that's great. Uh, because that differentiates the two families right now. Are we in a position to collect? Yes, we are. Uh, then this would be a good candidate for collection. And uh, if possible, we don't need the whole colony. We can just get a snip of yeah. a couple of polyps. Yeah, we should take no more than half. Yeah. Um, so a couple of polyps would be ideal. Yes. Should we stop the shoot? All right, Joe. And we're going to pause the chat during our sampling, so uh, stay tuned and we'll return when we can. Mm. So, Raja. You want to slurp them? Uh, you can also put up the uh, nav screen over there if you want. Tell you what you think. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be. Slurp probably would be too much. It would probably take the whole organism. Uh, or so after we snip it. Yeah, yeah snip, snip and slurp, slurp would be okay. Snip and slurp. Yeah, you'll have to do the whole flushy thing. Yep, I'm doing yeah, that right now. Flushy thing. Thank you. coming in. So just uh, add a little scale size there. That's so tiny. 
And you're talking about uh, just getting one of the... Less than half of the polyps. A couple yeah. of polyps, like less than half of the total yeah, colony. So, yeah, like Tricky. if you could get, yeah, half would be like maybe four yeah. um, polyps. But yeah, yeah that's going to be a little tricky. Less than half. And if this isn't seeming to be possible, Dan, um, just let us know and we can What's move that? on um, and see if we can ascertain an abundance of the species. I, I can't hear you. Right, yeah, that was, that was tricky. Yeah, we just don't want to take the first organism that we've seen. Um, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, so. I would, well, depending on your patience level, so it's a moving target, it's very small. So. Yeah, very light, very small. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. That's okay. We, I talked with science. Um, Roger that. Yep. I think we just make our observation and pay our respects. Yes, I Good. think. That, yeah, I think we can move on. And um, if we start to see an abundance of these, we can. Um, take one whole organism, but we want to make sure that there's a good community here first before doing that. Right. Good idea. I would say the chance of getting a good, useful scientific sample would be better with taking the uh, whole organism. If I yeah, good point. If I would have pulled the trigger there, it, you know, because it's moving, I, I wasn't convinced I would uh, get a clean uh, All sample right. there. Yeah, thank you for trying. My pleasure. Yes, Beautiful. absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for trying. It's a tricky one, for sure. Okay, you can go away, please.
Mm -hmm. Last year, we had an issue where we collected a cement. It was the first that we saw. Decision is decision. So we're going to continue pausing the chat as science discusses in the back row. This one would <laughs> be a solastroid feeding on an anthomastus. Really? Yeah. At maybe least it has one of its arms. Maybe on they're it. just friends. Maybe <laughs> they're just friends yeah. and hanging out and chatting about the giant ROV. <laughs> <laughs> really good buds. Trying to get over in the BSC there, but I'm struggling. Zoom in on the pals there. On the pals, the friends. Is that a mushroom? Yeah, it's an anthomastus or a pseudo and It looks kind of a duck by the sea star. Okay, can I go in? Oh, yeah, I think they are just friends. They just okay. <laughs> yeah. Or this just is, it's this is eyeing it as a friend, this is and not then it will start. Not involving its stomach at all. Yet. <laughs> yeah. could, uh, come up another five for me. All right, thank you for everyone tuning in. This has been the afternoon watch. We're starting our Check. watch change. Dog watch members are filing in. Yeah, and we'll be back for a little dinner change later. Um, but otherwise, uh, we'll see you on the midnight to 4 a.m. shift. That's right. Thank you, Front Row. Yeah, thank you, Front Row, and thank That's you right. for all our viewers from the U.S., Canada, Australia, Thailand, Puerto Rico, Norway, Hong Kong, and the U.K., Argentina. We appreciate you exploring with us and um, hope you continue to see some interesting stuff as yep. we continue. Yeah. Thank you, Kara. Thank, thank you. you so much, everybody.
Yeah, testing one. Yeah, you got me, Jack? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you, loud and clear. Pretty good current. Hello everyone. Hi. So they just got down to the bottom. They did a rock sample and pretty much that's it. Um, so they just left waypoint one or about halfway to waypoint two. There are 13 waypoints on this dive. Wow. So that's more than usual. Um, they're probably all close together. Uh, we've been instructed that with rock samples, we're gonna look for them kind of on slopes rather than at the top of uh, summits. Um, so we'll probably look for the next one, like waypoint four or five, something like that, if that's still our time. Um, and yeah, that's about it. All right. I guess they, what's up? Yeah. I can't hear Ready? you though, but yeah. I read your lips. <laughs> Does not. Bridge, nav. Could you please track a line bearing 150 at 0 0.3 knots? Thank you. Check. 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 Oh. Test. 150. Oh. Someone changed these. All right, it looks like we got everyone plugged in and kind of ready to go. Um, this is the four to eight watch. Just join in everybody. And I was thinking for our introductions today, we could introduce ourselves, say a little bit about where we're from, what our role is, and then um, thinking about sharing a little bit about like our coffee routines. Like if you've been drinking coffee, what kind, how you've been making it, are you adding anything to it, anything special. So hi everyone, my name is Tori Hunt. I am sailing as a science communicator and I am a high school science teacher from North Carolina and this is my very first time sailing aboard exploration vessel Nautilus and honestly I have not been really drinking that much coffee um, I tried the really nice coffee maker in the forward lounge yesterday and I loved it it was a great time but I've been trying not to be super dependent on it so I've been trying to stay away and sometimes I just forget to make it right before I watch so C pen that's one of the ones that they were trying to sample earlier where is it right here on like the right yeah well like um, but I've been told that we have to wait till we see more, I think, unless Asana wants to tag in from the lounge really quickly. Oh, is that two? Yes, that's two. Two, I think there were Umbella something. Umbella pathies? Not Umbella pathies. Yeah, those are corals. Uh, um, Umbellea? Umbellea? I think. Are you thinking it we're likely to want to sample this? Um, it seems like they really wanted to, um, but I was literally just told that we should see. So it is a clonal organism, but it's not a brand new species. So it's one of those situations where I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Well, what, what if we sample the smaller one? Well, I think it's the numbers thing for is the it permit. That you have to is have like what? 10. Yeah, we need to yeah. check the permit. And that's the issue at hand right now. But let's definitely document them so that we are sure <laughs> that we've seen three now. Okay. So we should keep moving, or do you want me to stop the ship? Um, we can keep moving. Copy that. Sebastian, do we have the um, permit anywhere nearby? Um, I have my copy of the permit, the summary of the permit. 
says only one species specimen can be collected per morphotype if the abundance assessment cannot be ascertained. Yeah, right. Up to three per specimens per morphotype if an abundance assessment of at least yeah. 10 such morphotypes is ascertained on an ROV dive. And for clonal organisms, we can only take up to half, which is why they were having issues earlier too. So we're at count of three for that, but um, Apsana would really like it if possible. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Okay, we'll keep looking. And the colonial one counts as one? Yeah. Thank you, Asako. I'm looking for the permit. Yeah. Okay. Mike, would you like to share? Yeah. Uh, Mike Brennan. I'm a maritime archaeologist with Search Inc. Um, I am the co-lead scientist for this expedition and watch leader for this watch. Um, yeah, I pretty much just use the espresso machine in the forward lounge because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I don't worry about drinking too much about, of it. What do you drink? Espresso. Oh, I usually... Just espresso? Well, you can do espresso or coffee. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I usually do espresso and then put a little milk and ice in it. Nice. Your turn. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm <laughs> Hannah. I'm Hannah Parody. I am part of the science and data team as a geologist, and I am a graduate student at California State University, Long Beach. And I don't drink coffee, and I have not had any tea either. I haven't had tea or a coffee. Um, but I do, I only drink one type of coffee, and it's Italian coffee, and it's a granita, and it's so good. I'm not sure I know what that is. It's delicious. <laughs> can you, do you, can you explain? It's like, like, is it? Like, it's sugar. Oh, okay. It's coffee, and then cream, like a ton of cream and a ton of sugar. <laughs> okay. So it's so perfect. Mine, really not much coffee at all. Yeah, but I can still taste, like, I still taste the coffee, okay. but I, I allow it because it's so sweet. But so yeah. what have you been doing to help, like, stay awake? Is that another one? Another one? I can't tell. Um, well. Yes, it is. It's just one, right? Just, just one, it looks like. All right, thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Um, to stay awake. It's a little tiny, like, hermit crab behind I here. basically. Oh. Oh my gosh. Really small. Yeah, to the left. Oh, it's just a little baby. Oh, it's moving kind of fast. Well. Yeah, he's moving pretty quickly. That's cool. <laughs> for a very important date. Good eye, oh, Derek. That was crazy. Tiny. Um, I guess I just take naps. <laughs> yeah. I just actually woke up from a nap. Me too. So, yeah, I fell asleep trying to read. So, that was... <laughs> So I'm still kind of slowly oh, waiting. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> stunt crab. <laughs> that slope was too much. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like slowly waking up right now. Okay, Sebastian. Um, hi everyone. I'm Sebastian Martinez. Um, I am a data logger here on the Nautilus. I am also a undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I do not drink any coffee here aboard the Nautilus, but I do back home. Um, I'm more of an iced coffee guy. Um, however, I also do enjoy um, a, I think my normal order right now when I'm back in Seattle is a hot grande caramel latte of oat milk. Mmm, that sounds nice. It is nice. It's very foamy. Mm. Nice. Derek, what about you? Hi, uh, hey everybody, uh, Derek Sowers. Um, the nav on this watch and 
I I came on board with a stash of uh, iced espresso from Starbucks, and but it's it's pretty much down to the last few sips, unfortunately. <laughs> so I've been uh, resorting to making hot coffee at night and then sticking it in the fridge overnight and having it as iced coffee at like 3:30 oh, in the morning. One? Right before our morning watch. Yeah. What did you bring? Like a, one of their boxes of coffee? Oh, another I just one. had like some large, some of those large. Um, I don't know. They're like a liter or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, huh. Yeah. But yeah, I like cream and sugar. Five. My half and half ran out a long time ago as well, so I'm doing the whole milk thing. Yeah. It's similar. It's close enough. Yeah. Are you drinking any before this watch or afternoon watch? I had a couple sips, but I generally try not to because it makes me not sleep so well at night. Yeah. So. Sebastian, was that five? Or yes, we're at five, five and keeping a tally. Nice. Jake, what about you? Yeah, my name's Jake. I am the Hercules pilot for this watch. Uh, and for coffee, I found a bag of coffee from Vermont on sale at home and stuffed it in my bag. Came out here and I'm on to the last few uh, beans. Ah. But uh, I've been scavenging and um, asking around for people who have other, other options. So if anyone has any leftover coffee, uh, I'll, I'll be a taker. And there, there's whole beans in the uh, in the forward lounge, if you grind it yourself. Oh. Nice. I believe this is the first cor coral of our shift, which yeah, is a chrysogorget. It's beautiful. Yeah, we were handling some in the lab last night, and they're very, very, the word I'd probably use is dainty. They're very thin and have this kind of like Delicate. a little bit of a cherry boss blossom here. look up close. I need down lights for this one to try. Down lights? Let's try it. Wait, was that the white looking one? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so yeah. pretty. Oh, but then we have, is that a shrimp associate? Uh, I believe. Looks like it. Cool yeah. I see two, cr two claws there. Looks like there's center. a claw here. I think it's a crab. Yeah, there's two claws. Oh, yeah, center. yeah. On the left oh. side of the it might be a squat lobster, lobster, you think? Yep. Okay. Nice gorgia. Gorgia. And holding. Oh. There you go. Coming out. All right, thank you. I don't know if many of our viewers have looked at our dive plan, but um, it's really interesting the the map of the bathymetry, which is the topography of the seafloor here, it's a really, really symmetrical seamount. Yeah, uh, it's really strange. It's kind of like a snowflake pattern. Um, it's like a cross. It's like a big X, yeah. I'd yeah. say like a, a semi-star. Cardinal point. Yeah, compass, compass rose. Compass, yeah, so that seems like a nice one. It's very cool. How was this specific ridge chosen for us to move along? I wasn't at that meeting. Me neither. <laughs> I we know Chris Kelly is the one who requested it. I yeah. remember that very specifically from my talks with him. This particular ridge or this seamount? He recommended the seamount. Okay, yeah, we're... I'm not sure about the ridge. Is this another unexplored seamount, or has this one been explored? Mapped. It's yeah, not it's not been seen. dived on before. Nice. It looks like it was mapped in 2014 by Falkor. Yeah. Like our last one. Yeah, we remapped this same ridge that we're diving on this morning with our multi-beam, so a different mapping system, obviously, than theirs, and uh, it matched up really nicely with their previous data. That's good. Nice. Nice yeah. to see the bathymetry hasn't changed a lot in my years. Always, always yeah. valid. I think <laughs> an enemy up here on the right. Same make and model of hardware though, right? You see, I would have thought that was a, a sea urchin. <laughs> you can tell because it's a little bit flowy at the tips. Yeah, I, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, sea urchins are more symmetrical too. Uh, then these are kind of like you could cut them anyway, and they're going to be symmetrical. 
or well, it's a five mean, part symmetry? Because they, um, they're they bending more, so it doesn't look as symmetrical because they're bent. In that sense, yes, I can agree. I think this is a tube anemone. Over zoom. Aww. Or it could be a single um, skeletarian polyp, a bigger one. That happens sometimes. I'm not sure Asako knows more about that. I think we saw a couple on the last dive. All right. All right, thank you. Nice. Tito, can we have an introduction? Oh, hi, Tito Colossius. Uh, I am an expedition leader and chief pilot with the ROV Jason back at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, out here moonlighting for a cruise. My first time out on Nautilus. I'm a big coffee drinker and went and got a bunch of Starbucks instant before we came out here, and I'm surviving on that. I do, uh, as Derek does, I enjoy cream and sugar in my coffee, and there is no cream to be had on the boat, so a little less than perfect, but... Nice. I see that there's, like, next to the sugar, I think it's, like, powdered creamer. Oh, yeah, I avoid that's that. sacrilegious. I think that's yeah. illegal in some countries. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's illegal in my country. <laughs> um, yeah, whole milk works fine. I tip, I like half and half, but whole milk's close enough. What about, I think it's uh, almond milk down there? Uh-uh. No? Not, not in coffee. I can do it in cereal, but it is not, this, it doesn't, doesn't work oh. in coffee. No. Interesting. Those no, are, none of those substitute mix, milks well. work. Oat milk, oat milk looks, works great in my opinion. Yeah, yeah but then it tastes like oats. <laughs> Not that much, depending on the brand. Enough. <laughs> Interesting. Ed, what about you? Uh, Ed, Ed, sitting here at the video seat. I'm not a coffee drinker. Hmm. Stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> Any tea or anything? Uh, I'll pass on the intro question today. Malia, are you still looking at the permit? I'm good. I actually found it. You found it? Okay. Oh, what's going on right here? Can we get a zoom on that? Looks like a dead sponge. Yeah. Yeah, it is a dead sponge, I think. Dead sponge. Looks like a rag. Is it a rag? It looks like a rag. No, it's probably a sponge, but okay. looks like a like a faded fabric or something. All right, Ed. All right, thank you. So since we were talking about coffee, I am a traditionalist when it comes to coffee. I like it black with nothing in it, but just coffee. Um, I'm not a snob. So I pretty much drink any coffee. <laughs> I'm prone to go to McDonald's and get a cup of coffee there. So I'm all good. So long as it's coffee, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Can you share a little bit about who you are and what your role is with that? Sure thing. So aloha no, aloha um, awinala. It's, it's afternoon in Papahanao Mokuakea. My name is Malia Evans. Um, I am the Outreach and Education Coordinator for the Papahanao Mokoakea Marine National Monument. On board, I am serving as the Resource Monitor and also an Educator. And um, yeah, yeah that's my, oh. my kuleana on board, my responsibility. What is this right here on the rock? Mm. Looks like the Loch Ness monster. Oh, a little small for that. Tiny nest.
over Zoom. Interesting how there's been no sightings of the Loch Ness Monster since we've had cell phones. I it's think it's just a... No, it has some two some tentacles off of it, doesn't it? Or is that... Am I just hallucinating that? I see something. Looks kind of like a Probably torn glass button. Yeah, it looks like something got bitten off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going with that. Right. Thank you. Coming out. Ed, I couldn't hear you. You said since we what? Uh, uh, not many sightings of the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot since cell phones became so oh. popular. I have so far just seen low bait flows, like right here, but just a lot of rock fragments. Yeah. Mostly. It's similar to last dive. Yeah. Rock wise, so far. Yeah. Something here. Oh, oh. yeah. That, was, that looked the, like a sponge. That's a sponge. Yeah. Small glass sponge. Are you interested in it? No. no. There's one mm -hmm. right above the oh, There's another one there. Well. We're on fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have a question coming in about if we ever come across plastic or pollution um, while we're down here looking at the seafloor. Um, I know on our watch we've come across a couple of things, but we've also talked before about how while we're in the monument, um, have y'all noticed a difference in the amount of pollution that we're seeing or just human oh, yeah. impacts down here? Uh, yeah, the, um, when you get closer to populated areas, there's lots of human-generated material, including, for some reason, just an amazing amount of white five-gallon plastic buckets. Buckets? Buckets. We did some work near a population center earlier in the year, and uh, the places uh, we saw those was surprising. What? Maybe it's from fishing, things that are bait stored in, or? Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Well, having been out here a few times before, I noticed on the uh, shallower seamounts, lots and lots of fishing gear and entanglement hazards for the ROV. Typically mm -hmm. anything under a thousand meters. Yeah, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, plastic does affect these islands and atolls, although they are very isolated, mm -hmm. um, far away from, you know, human population centers. Um, the, the gyres, the currents that run through the Pacific oftentimes bring a lot of floating marine debris onto the islands and atolls. And so that's been a really huge um, problem for the um, endemic animals and seabirds, um, our, our honu, our green sea turtles, our ilio holo ika uawa, our Hawaiian monk seals because of entanglement problems. Um, just really awful. You know, these animals get caught up in these derelict fishing nets, um, fishing lines, and there's no way they can get out. And if there's no human intervention, they will die. And so, um, you know, there's that problem. There's a problem of ingesting plastic that a lot of our seabirds um, are literally dying because of the plastic they've ingested. And they just are unable to process that. And so um, it is a huge problem. Um, in these very, um, you know, it's not, there's not a, a population in Popahanaumokuakea. It's usually people who come in as transitory. So 82,000, I think it was 82,000 pounds of um, derelict fishing gear, fishing nets was collected during the last um, access that the Pop Popahanaumokuakea Marine Debris Project um, came up to clean out all of that. So it's a continual work, unfortunately, um, but it's got to be done. Yeah. 
There's also numerous videos at the surface, which are super interesting, where especially marine mammals will almost approach small boats or divers in the water if they're entangled in something, almost as if they're seeking help. There's one there, I think. Sebastian. To get cut out. Oh, can we get a zoom, please? Or is that a person I'm not sure. Yeah. That look on the rock? Yeah. That's a crinoid, I believe. Uh, um, oh. Can we get a zoom, please? Wow, I was fooled. <laughs> so was I. Oh, wait, you might oh. not be yet. Let me get a good zoom. Oh, no. Please be a person good. Please be a person good. Can I go for zoom? No, crinoid. Crinoid, yep. You can see the class through behind it. Yes. Can. <laughs> That was a tricky one. The, the claspers are really well hidden in the back. Uh, it's okay, Hannah. We'll have more chances. I know. And we're learning and we're practicing. <laughs> you guys will be pros at telling your kind of germs in no time. I know. I'm impressed. <laughs> and Malia, there's also a um, video online of a scuba diver off of uh, the Big Island. That's weird. What's that? Uh, oh, frond? Sponge. Can I get a zoom Actually, on that? I have no idea. Is that a sponge? It's definitely a dead sponge, but I'm seeing a lot of weird dead sponges on this dive so far, even on the previous dive, so I'm very that, curious. That kind of matches the one we saw earlier that didn't mm -hmm. have the stock that looked like uh, ribbons of canvas or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Looks You're like the same. I'm seeing type. a lot of weird sponge morphologies that are dead on the seamount, so I'm curious if it's coming from above. I wonder if there's more living ones down the line. It looks similar to the folded one we saw earlier, just a piece of it. Mm -hmm. And it seems very well preserved. Like it hasn't disintegrated or... It might have been recent. Wow. Recent and like, uh, like how recent you think? Probably last couple months, I'll say. Would it take a long time for it to deteriorate down here? Like this depth, or would it be easy? I'm sorry? Like, is it easier for it to deteriorate, like, um, It varies depending on the environment. Um, some, if it's low oxygen, then sometimes yes. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure how the oxygen looks over here. It seems like we see some animals, which tells me that there is at least a normal amount of oxygen. Um, we have an optode, right? We do. It is reading. Should be on the Grafana, I think. Good. I can't hear. Huh? I can't fly and read the reading of the Well, come on, Jake. Can we get a zoom on the yellow on the right? I can pop it. Do you know which Grafana page? Uh, dive data or something? I thought it was Side dive data? Or science. Science? Science. It's on science, yes. What are we looking for? The O2. O2 oh. D or DO. I think it should be a micromoles per liter. Slavy, conductive views. I know the um, Oh, here it is. Um, 105. What? 105? Yeah. 105 micromoles per liter. Uh, mm. That doesn't sound right. What's it under? It's under science, and then it shows... Um, where, where did it go? Sorry. I just had it. Where'd it go? What screen is it under? I had it under science, but then it was like right here. But then it disappeared. Oh, here it goes. Oxygen concentration. I see what you're saying, the 105. It is micromoles per liter. And but it's 105? It, yep. I thought it was normally like 31. Is that is uh, normal? Yeah, so it's that's on a percent, I think. Grafana. That's saturation, I think. Saturation. Yeah, it's, that's concentration. Saturation, 
is 24.16. That's on Grafana under the side dive data. Uh, third row grass. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem right to me, but okay. So what does uh, that even mean? That, that's uh, pre, uh, I think you have to do some math to back out what that is. It's interesting, the spikes in salinity we had. Yeah, there's an uncorrected down below it, so that, that is the corrected value. Always remember that the concentration, you have to multiply by 0.813, only because that's my birthday. So they have a corrected micromoles per liter. Right now it's reading 85.8. I am not sure how to interpret that in the grand scheme of this area. Um, let's see. What depth are we at? 23.79 meters. So I know over on, on terrestrial archaeology, if there is a lot of oxygen, then their decomposition is quicker versus environments that don't have a lot of oxygen. So it'd be interesting to find out what's going on in the deep sea. Yeah, I, I'd, I'll, I'd also be curious just to see the way that oxygen circulates to yeah the deep sea. It keeps on bringing altitude for some reason. Oh, this might be pumice. Pumice? Mm -hmm. How do you tell if it's pumice? I know the one we looked at yesterday looked really light. Uh, yeah, color. That, yeah, exactly. Oh, fish. Oh, fish. Well, also, I guess it's kind of hard for me. Zeal. At least in that last fish. one, it looked Whoa. It looked oh, light wow. enough, but a lot of the sizes of the pumice that we've seen is pretty large. So I was just, now I'm like thinking maybe it was just sediment, sediment over a manganese crust, mm -hmm. but it did kind of look like a pumice to me. But yes, the pumice that we've seen so far is like a skin tone, like a, like a beige, Skin tone, mm -hmm. light beige. I don't know how to just. Is that like a good color? That's uh, that's kind of hard to tell because yeah. all of us have different color skin tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, just like a light beige. That's a, that's the best way to describe it. What about like looking at the texture of the rock? Um, it's kind of hard to see the texture from the view that like I'm looking at mm -hmm. I usually can tell oh. the texture if we like zoom it up can but we get a zoom on these pink corals please sure sorry continue but um when uh when we zoom I'm able to see if it has vesicles that we talk about and so. vesicles are holes yes so it's like ga like gaseous like empty pockets mm -hmm. oh, but yeah several holes. different corals yeah. back to back to back over zoom, we're going to have to it here. Yeah, sure. And is that the cup corals, too? This seems like hemichorallium and anthomastis. And then can I yeah, zoom up, oh, go those up? those aren't cup corals. This I don't one know here? what those are. Yes. Oh, and there's that, that, oh, sorry. There's a, a squat. I think it's one of the squat lobsters Where we saw you? yesterday. I got more zoom. Uh, nope, that's it. Oh. Do we out see any striping? I'm I don't, checking. I don't see any striping. You're pretty, pretty good current. Yeah, I see it. <coughs> I think the guy on the right right here might be. Oh, wow, there's four different species. 
back to back to back. Oh, yep. We just a good overview here. Oh wow, yeah. a whole little reef. Would this be a good place for a Niskin? Um, I think so. Bridge nav. All stop, please. Lot to look at. Make sure that we're at least three meters from the bottom when you have a chance. It's so kind of a wall, so um, the nearest flying. Oh, that was a very tall ball of someone's punch right very there. But I'm also going to start getting tugged, so I. Do you want me to back up? Wow. Yeah. There's some coming up too. Just back up 20 meters. Yeah. Bridge, nav. Maybe a little bit to the west as well, closer to this wall. Okay, hold on, stand by. So if my um, math is correct by what I just looked up, if um, if that is a correct optode reading from the dissolved oxygen, we're at like 3.2 milligrams per liter, which is actually a little low. Uh, anything under two is hypoxic, so we're, but it could be up to 20. So I think I think oxygen is it's, it's like sustainable, but it's a little on the low side here. Wow. Thank you for looking that up. Yeah. Just a quick look. I don't know. It's, I'd have to go back to my other data from previous expeditions to see what we were reading on other places. I thought it was. I thought that our optode had been reporting in milligrams yeah, per liter was, before. There was a change about four or five years ago where they ah. standardized on micromoles per liter. That would be why. Do you want you bring your heading around to the west? Bring my heading to. Wow, massive corals. I think that is a Paragorgia. I think to the right is a primnoid, but I can't really get see this far away quite yet. Asako, Asako said, when strong current exists, there are nice corals. We can see some other coral fans ahead, so. And here they are. <laughs> she said, there's some corals in the middle of that nice rock. Yeah, that was the rock that we were looking at yeah. initially, and then we got kind of yeah, pulled yeah. away. Puhaku. Yeah, I'm seeing a hemichorallium <laughs> right in front of us. <laughs> and oh. Po -haku. oh, not poo. Oh. Probably <laughs> a primoid, <laughs> an enemy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that makes sense, yeah, that these corals are thriving in areas with oh. strong currents, because mm -hmm. they're like opportunistic feeders. Mm-hmm. All right, we, probably a good place to take a niskin oh, as soon as you're saddled. All right. Can you tell I just woke up you want a quick from zoom a nap? On these? Like <laughs> I'm sure. At least 35 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh I love that you try, Hannah. <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's also, the coral behind in the distance, I think it's supposed to like a slight yellow. We might want to get a zoom out on that later when we get the chance. All right. Um, can we see the base, please? If we can. I'm not sure if the angle works. No, I think that is a hemichorallium hiding right underneath it. I have to come around it. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Primnoid. Primnoid. Yeah. And this is a botryoidal Paracorgia. texture right there. Yep. Yeah. So the oh. yellow kind of weird one, the back, I think we wanted to get a good look up. Yeah. I think we're trying to get the base shot you asked for. Such diversity in a small little area.
I think Diver City sounds like a great place to live. Is there such a place? No. Oh. But, you know, the word diversity, right. Diver City. It's a play on words. Hail of dad jokes. <laughs> Yeah. I like having you in the room. You have good reactions. <laughs> Definitely a primnoid, and I, I keep meaning Paragorgia in the back, right there. This thing is completely out of focus. That's better. Got it. Come now. All right, I'll come up a couple meters and take a That was in. so good. <laughs> I think I think the the take home message here is the more tired someone is, the better my jokes are received. <laughs> I'm waking up. I'll wake up. Yes, uh, Masako, I saw the anthomastis as well. It looks similar to the one we collected it's with the small one. Right. The other dive. That's the. Uh, Once I get to a, a okay. rock o'clock, I'll sure it wasn't wake up. I'll be up alive. In the water but I am alive. I'm like, I'm fine. But yeah, also, it doesn't Thank take you. much to like make me laugh. <laughs> it really also doesn't. that. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to look at the yellow one. Yes. Uh, I'm noticing a lot of sp tall we glass sponges. Weird yeah. positions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Off, poured on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bio now at the on. middle of the screen. Okay. Racking back. Yes. We're, I think we're trying to get a zoom on that one, Asaka. Uh, we're doing on your it. We're just trying to. Oh, we're doing the Niskin first. Oh. Okay. Good. So. Which Niskin? Um, let's do Niskin 6, please. 6. What happened to 5? Bridge nav. Ball's gone. Oh, wait. Please put it please do 10 meters at 315. Thank you. Six. Oh, you guys re in the camera. <laughs> Look, it's taped on. That's so cute. <laughs> we now have two yellow yellow pull tabs. One of them's like a Frankenstein pull tab. Poor five. Tapping. Who's tapping? Not me. This can trigger. Thank you. I like the new position That's of the sample uh, ninety one. It's a different camera actually too. Huh. Sample ninety one. Oh that's cool. Ah, oh, dang it missed. If there was a changing camera, I'm betting Dan was involved. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does that change something that happened before this dive? Yep. Uh, unless he swam down there and changed it after we launched. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, we, we, we now want to try and improve. We now want to check out this yellow coral? Yes. Yep. This guy. Or that one is a better way uh, of saying that. That'd be tricky about landing on the ones we just imaged. I think this is not the third large glass sponge right there on the right that has had its head removed. Whoa. Or at least partially removed. I'm wondering if that's a trend. But I think we need to just focus on this coral right now. I wonder if it's a kula mana mana haumea. Oh, possibly. It's pretty white, Wait. yellow, but I don't think we're in the depth range for that. Wait, I have the tether? Well, here. maybe we're changing that. Maybe. If we see it. Wow. Oh, that is really tall. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I pointed that out. I'm like, oh, I was kind of a attention. weird position too. Maybe leaning over Looks the current. Like you're tugging. If you come out of auto heading, I might be able to reach it. Does that touch the current? Uh, I might be able to get it from here. Yeah. Am I rack back forward or in the forward position? Looks like it.
I think I've already seen some anthemasses around it. Masaka said, thank you for trying to get a position and look at this. Oh, we've got some anemones growing on it. Coming out a little bit. Wow. Yep. That's cool. So it's less yellow now that we're close to it. Yeah. Yeah. The base Arch. is really cool. There's, There's so many little there. things yeah. on it. Oh, yellow. I think that's a broken stem that's fallen oh, down. Okay. Not like roots. That's what I thought it was initially. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah I, like thought, I thought the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like a root system, but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I, that's why I was confused. But what you said makes way more sense. <laughs> It's very striking. Kupayanaha. Mm -hmm. Kupayanaha. Yeah, Kupai. Amazing. All right. Should be able to come back on our heading. I, th I think I really like that word for wow or phrase for wow um, because wow feels like a like just a sound that someone makes, like, you know, it's sort of like that, like an onomatopoeia, but kupayanaha is much more of a word rather than a sound. So it's it's fun that it, uh, that's what correlates to it. Mm -hmm. And it it's just like, sounds so great on the it tongue. It does, yeah, it like does. Like when you say but it, it, it feels like, good. <laughs> it's on onomatopoeia, but in a different way. Yeah. Bonus points for getting onomatopoeia in there twice. Oh, are these ripple marks? Yeah. Wow, yeah, this current must be strong. Oh, that's cool. And speaking of currents, that's kind of the name of our expedition, refers to um, to currents. Ala Aumoana Kaiuli, the path of the deep sea travelers. And also Aumoana means ocean currents. Let me know when you're ready. It uh, often uh, rains so ready? hard in Jacksonville that we have uh, bed forms in the sand on the side of the road. <laughs> from all the water moving down it. Yeah, that that's happened in Louisiana too. Yeah, first time I saw that, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in New England anymore. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You're going too fast. Yeah, it's okay. I wonder if we see a lot of these dead sponges because the current comes and goes and kind of like knocks them over. Mm. Maybe. What, are you guys pointing at something? Oh, guys, go. Sorry, I'm just submitting something. There we go. Um, yep, two Chrysogorgids. The course over ground was. One one five. Thank you. Here's another one. A big, big sponge up forward. And another one. And another one. And another one. Oh, seven oh wait, I need to use this. Pink, pink, pink. Yes. Oh. Pink, Sudden pink, pink, pink. Oh wait, you missed one in the back. <laughs> 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 and this one. Well, I don't think that was a Chrysler Gorgia though. What's that? One five zero. One one. Oh wait, look, there's. <laughs> I'm gonna just go back to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, there. look how nice that is. That's Massive. really tall. Yeah. Good pie.